Hello, hello. We are back with Lavender Shadows, going into our second part here. And we're going to have a funeral. Rest in peace, Maxence Picard, Lord of the Harmony Opera House. So, we see the... Um, the church, this big noble church, um, decked out in all of these ancient sacraic, um, relics and decorations, minutia, various things like that. Um, Josephine, tell us at least one thing that would be a part of this whole funeral thing, just because you're an, also an expert on the saint empire and it's weird things that about it tell us something that happens or like a, a decoration that's there or like something that's usually served at the funeral justice Give <laughs> <laughs> that was great sorry i couldn't help you me. know what i think it is I think lavender is a of course. big part of, of course. Of this wow. Wow. Where would you get that? I'm idea? so creative, you know? <laughs> um, like it's like lavender tea, I think is what it is. I think lavender tea is something that you serve that the guests serve in honor of this. Okay. Yeah, person. lavender tea is considered like the the drink that you drink to honor a fallen friend. Yes. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, I'm into it. All of your choice. Yeah. So um, we see various flowers, decorations, um, things going on. Yeah, we see this table filled with like these ornate tea, tea sets um, that have all this like lavender tea. And it's like a, a part of the ritual is like you're supposed to go up to this table and like take a take uh, at least one sip of this like tea. Um, and as part of like every guest is expected to do this. Um, and so, yeah the beginning of the the funeral i think is probably similar to that right everybody's kind of like getting seated and so they'll go to this table they'll take a drink from one of the teacups and then they'll go and sit and find their seat um and so the uh, various nobles decked in their um black mourning clothes um are taking their seats getting ready for this funeral to begin uh marco josephine vivianne any of you like to describe yourselves entering the the locale well i didn't figure i was actually like in there i was figure i was just kind of on the outskirts like on the edges of it not really mingling with the crowd just kind of observing sure yeah so i mean this is like a big you know fancy uh you know, styled like a Roman Catholic church sort of a thing. So there's definitely like an alcove or two that you could just kind of hang out in. Um, so maybe you, you come in with Bertrand Crozier and he goes and does all the like, you know, pomp and ceremony stuff and, and then you just kind of take off. I take we've already had the scene where I talked to him about what the... Cave. Yeah, we can assume that mm -hmm, you've you've said, hey, can you, you know, can we provide this this cave with protection? And I would have asked about the prostitutes. <laughs> oh, it's just... Um, okay, yeah, I mean, I think he, the initial conversation was like, Marco, come on, we can't have the Harmony Opera House stained with the, you know, our reputation like that. Like, it was one thing to, like, let her in to talk to you during the day, but, like, having her, like, stay there, that's a totally different thing. And so you can pick up that conversation with him again later, but that was the initial response. Um, yeah, sure. So we see you, like, you kind of just go off into the shadows, <laughs> the lavender shadows, um, and, uh, watch the... <laughs> watch the proceedings um are you what what clothes are you wearing i only have one pair <laughs> <laughs> right so you wear the actually same. did he i mean unless he gave me something else to wear because i think he have that conversation where he said he's going to give me something else or something like that look his pants are fresh out of the ice box so <laughs> all the bacteria has been killed <laughs> yeah it's true it's true um I didn't he like give you a pair of clothes that you were wearing that that initial night? Um, That's what I was saying. Like I think I don't remember if I if I accepted them that night. I, I just don't remember. Yeah. So if he if he gave me one, I'm probably wearing those just so I not because I want to, but because it'll help me blend in. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Sounds good. So so we see you uh, doing that. Uh, yeah, Josephine, where are you in the, because obviously we, you were here far before everybody else. Right. Where, where do we see you? 
Of course. Um, I think I am either, I think I'm either at the front of the church greeting people as they come in or more towards the casket, like telling them like, thank you so much for coming. And then like mm-hmm. preceding them to like, look at, you know, to like make their, to, or like by the tea area to like pay their respects, you know, like yeah. somewhere important where I'm talking to everybody. Shh, of course. Yeah. So let's, let's say this. I think the casket hasn't been brought out yet. Like that's the thing that's going to like, there's like pallbearers that are going to bring it to the front of, <laughs> as part of the ceremony. Um, so let's say, yeah, you're by the tea, the tea uh, table. Um, yeah. Greeting people and like letting them know, Hey, this is the normal, you know, he was, he was a, um, you know, tell, tell them like, uh, Maxine's Picard really loved the ancient Sacrike empire, you know, rituals, like this is mm-hmm. what he would want you to do. Please, you know, pay his, pay your specs by doing this. Um, okay, right. cool. Yeah. Um, I think at one point we see, um, Lord Frederick Kleber, um, come in and, and go up to you, Joe, and then like you, you give him this information. Um, is there any particular way that you come across to him? No, because I'm trying to be very polite. Yeah. Just, um, yeah. I may not like him, but I'm like, nope. This yeah. is my like. This is my day when I'm supposed to shine. Mm-hmm. And like, this funeral is for him, but really, I'm the star of this funeral. <laughs> <laughs> I see. And uh, I want to be as polite and respectful as possible, so that way I come across the best for this like. All right. I mean, that sounds like an etiquette role to me. Um, <laughs> yes. Let's, let's have you make that role. Okay. Um, I'm wondering if I can fork in anything. I wonder if I can fork in... Um... Oh, you're not very good at etiquette. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not. Um, okay. I mean, inconspicuous? Like... Uh... That does not sound like that, that was your intent. Your your intent was like this. This funeral is about me. I don't think that's well. But I'm trying to be like subtle about it, though. I'm. Tr- I'm I, well, that would be the etiquette, ahead. right? I I don't think I'm, inconspicuous makes sense here, because you're like right okay. out in front of everybody. If it was, it was it okay. One can thing can I was... also for, can I fork in history though, since I'm explaining like what's going on to this guy and um, um trying to properly like no. That's like a separate thing. Um, I'm not. Yeah, I don't think that would help you with your etiquette here. Uh, fine. I just. Yeah, yes, I know. I don't think nothing you, that's gonna help my hair. That's that's the only thing. Astrology. I know, but that's <laughs> a risk. Um. Okay. I just yeah, because I have to decide before the yep. the rule. Um. Yeah, let's just, you know what, let's just go for it. You took a look at the um, star charts earlier today and we're like, <laughs> well, is it a good day to be etiquette ish? Yes. <laughs> okay. So what's my. Um, I'm looking that up wait, right how, now. I'm like, wait, how do I roll this? Uh, you're going to click the D6 next to etiquette. Okay, I did. And then should pop up modifiers. Nothing's popping up. Uh, try just uh, minimizing your character oh, sheet. Goes. Yeah, okay. there it goes. Okay, no, uh, one modifier. Uh, no, because astrology gets oh. rolled separately. Right. Okay, yep. that's right. Okay. Um, and the ob's gonna be two. Okay. Um, I clicked it, but it's not going. It may just be slow. My internet is pretty slow, but this is like painfully slow. I clicked that a long time ago and now I'm just talking because I'm uncomfortable <laughs> um, <laughs> waiting for this with so much suspense. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, <laughs> well, I'm just curious. So does that come up with you, know, you immediately? Yes, it did. Okay. That's weird. That's very weird. Um, I again? definitely, yeah, I guess so. Okay, that, that was really weird. Okay, no modifiers. Base Option. up two. Submit. Oh, oh okay. Well, uh, okay, so, so yeah, roll that astrology <laughs> die first. Roll one d six, and mm-hmm. then it's greater than greater than four. Four, right? Okay. Yes. It automatically rerolls two and gives you extra successes. Yes. Um. So just go ahead and roll it again. Okay. Can I just? 
Okay. okay. Yeah. So two more Another successes. Su yep. Woohoo! So you nice. get uh, uh, six, three successes all together. Nice job. I was polite today. <laughs> you were very polite today. So go ahead and mark a difficult test on your etiquette there. Um, Woohoo! Nice. You're almost to upgrading your etiquette. Yay! Um, yeah. So you wow. managed to. Uh, the stars were in my favor today. The stars today. were in your favor. Literally, that's the whole reason. Is <laughs> You it would you looked at your horoscope and it was like it was like you will be kind and polite today to everyone you meet and you're like yes I will yes I will thank you yep uh yeah so you managed to pull that off very nicely um and uh, what's his name Kleber young Lord Kleber uh, you know just nods to you respectfully and goes over to the tea and, and and this also means that everyone like respects your like directing them to the T, right? Nobody like tries to like be like, this is weird. Like everyone's like, oh, okay. Yeah, this, this is something we can do. I explain it very well. Yes. And you explain it in a way that's, that wouldn't be like strange to the nobles, but rather like, this is, you know, something that'd be very important to Max sense. And, and you kind of downplay all of his eccentricities and try to make this seem as normal as possible. Um, like comparing it to some other funeral rituals that maybe they're more familiar with. Um, yeah, but everyone seems to be respectful and uh, doing the tea and then going and sitting down. Uh, and then the Augusts walk in. Um, Vivienne, would you like to describe yourself? And like mainly just like, a, I guess, if you're wearing anything out of the ordinary besides just a black dress. Or if like Probably your not. emotional state shows on your face at all, given the last few days of isolation. I mean, she's definitely not like super excited about anything, but I feel like yeah. no one here is excited about anything. That's right fair. Now, so you look suitably sad that your cousin yeah. died. <laughs> yep. Okay. Yeah. So Vivian enters, um, and uh, yeah, you go sit down with your your father and mother. Um, Joe, you managed to keep it together with uh, even her, her father uh, with that whole thing. And uh, everybody sits down. And then Lady Jocelyn Marcant comes up to the front of the um, church and is wearing whatever particular robes would be worn in a situation like this. Just some sort of like ancient version of whatever robes that the priests of the church normally would wear anyway, um, but like stylized for the Sacrike. And she's wearing a, um, let's see, I guess it would be, yeah, this, like, purple sash um, across these, like, white robes. And she stands up in front of the um, the place. And I think that this is a little odd uh, because um, this is a, normally a priest, particularly a male priest, would be up here doing this. Um, and so it's just a little bit of like a awkward, every kind of like looking at each other moment. But uh, Lady Jocelyn Marcant kind of steps up there, and let's let's I'm gonna double check what she's good at. Okay, so she seems to be holding herself together well, even though she's shy. She's not like socially inept or anything. Um, so I mean, she, she's a noble. So. Yeah, she's a noble. She knows how these things go. And so she steps up there and she starts to give this you know the normal ritual speech uh she calls the pallbearers to come forward and you know various people like uh sir pascal gobert and um uh what's his name um sir leonard charbonnet charbonnet um the two people we know of from the forsaken quill society are, are among the people who are one of the four pallbearers and uh, i'm gonna go ahead and make a roll for her to do the ritual to for everything to go over well so I was going to say, can I be up front interpreting? Aha. Uh -huh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that'd mm -hmm. be helpful. <laughs> yep, that makes sense. Also, <laughs> subtlety of the spotlight. You know, <laughs> right. kind of a thing. Right? Okay, um, well, let's first do this then. Let's make a conspicuous roll. Josephine Belay. Um, um, an inconspicuous roll? A, a conspicuous roll. Um, a conspicuous roll. Yeah, because you're trying to draw attention to yourself. Um, well, uh, what's in your, a way. What's your intent? What like? My intent is to interpret this so beautifully, like you know how people like Carly. You know how people sign like the um, like the Pledge of Allegiance yeah. or like you know the the Star Spangled Banner, and yeah. they're like so like exaggerating about it. I just want this to be so beautiful that everybody is just like 
wow even if they can't understand they're like oh that's pretty yeah i think that's a conspicuous yeah. so, role. i think that's the task okay. there simply because uh, ancient languages only make sense if they know the ancient language right they would be impressed if they knew what what the language was but if you're just trying to general impress people with the way you're doing it that's conspicuous i think so you're gonna add that to your being learned being learned i'm learning so many things uh-huh. <laughs> okay um, con Mm -hmm. I don't think I'm spelling this right. And that's a will skill, obviously. So you're not very good at it at all. <laughs> oh no! Why did I? Why did I do this? Okay. Um. I think uh, this is only an ob one. Like people are the only person to distract <laughs> from you is the is uh the lady jocelyn marcant and the pallbearers right. so i don't think it's gonna be too terribly difficult and so you well, yeah your intent is like people are impressed by your florid display of this language okay right yeah okay ob one okay base ob one it'll double to two because it does it automatically Ooh. okay can i use a fate uh yes you got a six yep yeah. so you you can spend either one or two fate if you spend two, you can roll one of the failed dice as well. It turns a 50-50 chance to like a 60-something maybe right. chance. Yeah. Uh, yeah, why not? I've got like six fates. Yeah, so you have six fates. Okay. So yep. what, is it? what am I rolling? Just So slash oh. R or roll um, space 2d6. Um, greater than four exclamation point, which will mean the six is automatically re-roll. Yes. There you go. Yep. Nice. Okay, so mark a routine bubble on conspicuous, um, and you're being learned there. You need six more tests to learn conspicuous because you have a horrible will. Um, but then also go to your will on the top, uh, your stat, and mark uh, two fate in the little bubble next to your will stat. The very top um, of your of that page right. there. Okay. Yeah, because you've spent two fate on your will. Sounds good. Oh, I spent a fate last time, and I didn't mark a fate. On your will? No, not on my will. What did I spend a fate on? Or did I? I spent a fate on circle. Oh, no, I spent it on my circles test. That's right. Yep. Okay, so no, no, we're good. Yeah, we're good. Uh, cool, yeah. So, yep, meaning you have two less fates. So you have four now. Awesome. Yep, so you successfully draw attention to yourself in a, in a good manner. In a very classy way. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Everyone's very impressed and moved by this display of affection for um, Lord Max's, the late Lord Max's Picard. So now I'm going to make a roll for Lady Jocelyn Marcant to do her ritual funeral stuff. So she's going to add uh, just one advantage from the linked test that was preparing all of the funeral stuff in the first place. Um, one from etiquette. One from funeral-wise, obviously. <laughs> One from oratory. One from rituals wise. And that's about it. So her... That's about it. She has five modifiers. This is literally all she's good at is funeral related things. Uh, let's see. Ritual. What are the obs here? A funerary rite is an ob four test, so this is going to be a little bit diff more difficult. To Wait, would it be one. safe to say that she could get an advantage die mm -hmm. because of my wondrous display? Uh, yo, oh, of course, yeah, yeah, that makes Great. sense. So let me add this up again. So it's six. That makes total sense. That was a, a helping dice. <laughs> Actually, yeah, let's just consider it helping. Um, for uh, for uh, you're using your ancient languages to help her um, that's another thing i don't think we've done we don't i don't think we've done mm -hmm. anything with yet you can also help someone with a skill and you get a test um of the same type uh with whatever skill you helped with so uh all right so that means she has six modifiers against oh against, it was against an ob four um but she succeeded anyway let me just double check i'm not sure how many dice that would have been or what the test was. Okay, so it's a it's a routine then. 
Um, so you don't get a test for it because your ancient languages is high enough that you don't need routines anymore. Yeah. But uh, she does get a routine for her ritual. She only has a four in it. There you go. Uh, the funeral is uh, well received. Um, the ritual is done quite well. And everyone is moved. And nobody thinks it's too weird. Everything just kind of goes well. The funeral was a success. He stayed dead. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he did stay dead. Necromancy was not involved. Uh, Perfect. Yeah. So, Marco, you're watching the whole proceedings here. Do you want to make some sort of test to, like, see if you notice anything out of the ordinary that, like, you can add? Sure. Yeah. You can add to your... I don't your know what that system. would be exactly. Well, let's look. Do, do, do. It would probably be an untrained observation. I mean, that's the closest uh, thing I have currently. Yeah, it might be observation, but that's like specifically like someone who's stealthing or it depends. Okay, wh what information do you want? There's a skill that it's not in the book, but it's it's a extrapolation um, from my knowledge of Burning Wheel that we've used in the past called empathy, which is basically like social observation the observation is basically like does someone hold have a secret knife is someone hiding in the shadows um empathy would be did someone make a face that i need to know that sort of thing um do you want to look for hidden knife or do you want to look for that one person seems really angry at this whole thing I mean, I don't think anyone's going to try and go for anything extra here, given all the witnesses, like a yeah. knife or anything. <laughs> yeah. If anything, it would have been in the tea, and it's a little too late for that. True. <clears throat> There's a reason he didn't drink any. Um, <laughs> I'll just guess oh, I'll what if that thing. was the tea he was drinking when he died? Well, no, he was drinking wine. Oh, that's right. That's right. Okay. So it's empathy. Uh, yep. So you can add that into your being learned, and that is a will and perception skill. So you'll put in Will on that first one and then that little box next to Will and then, yeah, put in Perception. It'll be a mix of both of those. Oh, that made it lower. Uh, it made it higher uh, because you have that... that it was a six. That far bubble is how many tests you need to open it. Oh, okay. The other one is like how many dice you're rolling. So okay. now it's five and five. Okay, so you're trying to like pick up mood stuff, right? You're trying to be mm -hmm. like, someone is angry or, oh, that person seems really sad about this. Uh, more than usual. And so that would be an op two to read someone's mood. Okay. Yep. Let's see if you pick pick any of this up. Uh, this isn't probably gonna work. Op two. Yep. Op two. Yep. Oof. <laughs> yeah. That was a bad roll. Uh, okay. Yeah. So. I mean, there was like a twenty percent. Yeah. <laughs> it was pretty. It was pretty unlikely. Um, especially because you had the wound dice, so you were rolling four against four, basically. Mm -hmm. um, so you can mark a routine on so that little bubble next to empathy. You're you're learning that, and uh, yeah, I mean, everyone is suitably sad, but like nothing out of the ordinary, right? <laughs> Did Emily just send something to Alyssa? <laughs> keep going, keep going. Okay. Sorry. Yeah, so Marco, you watch the proceedings and you don't see anyone um, give anything away with their faces or emotions or anything like that. But, you know, there's a whole, you know, time of talking and, and eating afterwards. So you can probably maybe talk to someone if you really wanted to as well. So the the funeral ceremony ends and then everybody kind of mingles. So let me... Oh, just to make sure, I don't like see anyone bald that matches the description well, that'd be like pretty easy to see. Yeah, I mean, you don't see a bald guy. I mean, you see bald people, but like, I mean, that's really the only description you were given, right? A bald that's guy with true. a deep voice. That's basically it. So maybe there is a person like that. You see several bald people, but um, I mean, I don't think <clears throat> being bald is necessarily a super popular thing among the nobility. So probably maybe like one person, but um, yeah, there'd probably be at least one person. That's what I should have been looking for. I should have been looking for wigs. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> but I mean, honestly, you can make another roll, right? Those are both. You have enough time okay. during the funeral. Yeah. Okay. An observation test. What will that ob be? Uh, let's What's see. The, uh, how hard is it to spot a 
to spot a fake. Yeah, too big. Uh, well, it depends on how well they are hiding it, really. Um, <clears throat> but that also depends on whether or not there is someone in the crowd to hide something from you. Um, and I don't think wig technology was very advanced back then. <laughs> no, probably not. Let's just say Obwan. Oh, wow. wow. Oh, no. Oh, my gosh. Uh, well, you got a six. Mm. You have five fate. Sure, let's make it a coin flip. Mm -hmm. I think I'm typing this right. Oh, that, that was unlucky. Uh, okay, yep. So, uh, I mean, you don't see anyone with a wig, but, like, it also probably would be unlikely. I don't think wigs are in fashion anyway. Um, so, uh, yeah. Oh, I don't have a... There's no place to put, like, fate we're being rolled on these ones? Uh, yeah, so you're going to put that on perception. If it's not in... If it's been being learned you do a fate on, you just put it in the stat that it's based on. So, uh, yeah, put it one in perception. Okay, yeah, so, I mean, you watch the whole proceeding, and it seems pretty on the up and up. I mean, it's just, eh, okay, yeah, everybody's at a funeral. Nobody's trying to, like, be suspicious or is angry about something. Um, Let me double-check my notes here real quick. Um, Yeah, so the mingling begins. What does everyone do? Is there anyone who wants to have a particular conversation during this um proceeding after the fact joe you will have to go over the will <laughs> stuff um uh you oh. do you know that um max and spicar i mean th there's like lawyer um, crozier has been handling most of this but there you, you were let know by crozier at one point um that uh <laughs> max and spicar left you some things in his will um Ooh. yeah what do you leave me <laughs> like, i mean you don't know yet oh so really you're gonna you're at least yeah you're gonna meet Crozier at the after after the whole proceeding and, and the mingling to to talk about that. Um but uh yeah, does anyone have any conversations or mingling they want to do? You said there's one person who is bald. Yeah, there's one bald, right? bald, bald person. I might just linger around him a little bit to see if he has a deep voice. <laughs> okay. I might just walk past him while he's talking. Yeah. Um okay. Uh I think he does. Sure, yeah. yeah. What's he look like? Just out of curiosity. Uh, I mean, he's a tall guy with um a short beard and uh yeah, bald. He seems he seems like he might have been in the military at some point. Has like a scar or two, maybe. Calloused hands. Car short carrying a side sword. At party. Party. Uh, funeral. <laughs> party. <laughs> You were describing mingling I'm thinking. Uh, uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and he had scars. Yeah, he had a few scars and he's carrying like a side sword, so he might be Well, I don't think he would have had a side sword at the house. No, no. I just the beard is the only important part there, pretty much. Mm hmm So uh yeah, I mean do you you just walk by him and just take note of him? Yeah, I just I wanted to hear if he had a deep voice, like just like I'm I'm grasping his straws here. Right. Do you want to ask maybe Crozier like who the guy is, so you like at least know his name? Sure. Yeah. Um, Crozier probably knows him. Um, I mean he's passively familiar with um, nobles. He has the skill lord wise, so that's a thing that he has. So yeah, he knows the guy's name. Um, his name is um, Quentin Bouveau. Lord Quentin Bouveau. Bouveau. He was a um, like a captain at one point. Um, he was in a some sort of foreign conflict, uh, you know, twenty years ago or something like that. He's like middle aged, um, and he got promoted. Uh, to like yeah captain at one point and then i think right now he's doing he's he's basically retired from military stuff but he he still like entertains himself by um dueling and stuff um yeah where did uh, did, and did you know where he came from where he came from mm -hmm. what do you mean by that 
Like, did he come from far away or was he like a local? Uh, I mean, yeah, he's uh, he's a Varnish, so he's from this country. Uh, he's a noble of the um, of the country. Uh, yeah, he has a, a baronetcy or whatever. So, I mean, I was like, does 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 Bertrand kind of get what I'm inkling towards? <laughs> Oh, okay. Yeah. So I mean I feel like it's obvious. Hey, I've already told him some bald guy, you know, some bald guy <laughs> right. kills his like, like, hey, who's that bald guy? Okay, yeah. I think he gives you kind of like a dark look and he says, Marco, I would be careful with that one. He is a dangerous man and not one to be take taken lightly. He would Well, let's just say that he has uh challenged people to a duel to the death for less. You're not exactly painting him in a good light right now. <laughs> Do you, you say that? I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, I just kind of chuckled to myself. I probably chuckle and say you're not exactly painting him in a better light. Well, I don't know much about the man myself. I just know that if you do look into him as a possible suspect, I would be very careful. Again, nobles are powerful men as you well know and they can ruin the lives of men like us <laughs> i just laugh again like i said you're not helping this case <laughs> yeah <sighs> and he kind of like pales a little bit like oh no like you're just gonna you're gonna go after this guy aren't you <laughs> i'm not gonna i'm not gonna do anything i'm gonna i'm gonna talk to tristan see if i can describe him see if it rings any bells mm -hmm. he didn't mention a beard yeah <clears throat> I, it's kind of the only thing I have to go off of right now, so... Yeah. Crozier nods, and then he says, Did you go back and try to investigate the house further after that incident? I mean, I thought this was the next thing that happened chronologically. Right, it I was. This, yeah, I mean, it was. It's like, I, I haven't had a chance yet. This is... Yeah. I've he, just, he just nods, wash. and he says, All right. <clears throat> well, I still trust you, Marco, and I know that you'll do a good job. Now, if you excuse me, I have some shrimp that I absolutely must attend to. And then he walks away. I don't see any short people, so I'm not sure who he is. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. Uh, Vivienne, um, do you have any conversations that you want to have? I'm, like, trying to keep to myself. I'm, right. Like, I don't want to talk to anyone here. <laughs> okay. Plus, um, I mean, Joe is kind of occupied with a bunch of stuff, so talking to anyone here would be more difficult. Mm-hmm. I can't hear you, Alyssa, if you're saying something. Sorry. I think Joe at some point, though, goes over to Vivian, just like check in on her, just be like, mm -hmm. how are you? Like, just to have a conversation, like, right. how are you doing? Like, I know you've been in like lockdown and whatnot. <laughs> yeah, she's just like, I'm so so. And she's just like, sorry. Sympathy. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Um, okay, so yeah, I think you just, notice. Well, what I was going to say is when you go over there, you notice, one of you does, whoever, it doesn't matter, but um, you notice that uh, Lord Frederick Kleber literally notices that moment and then just like, ah, Joe's with her and then like goes, like oh makes gosh. a beeline to Vivienne. No. <laughs> to have a conversation with her. Um, and he tries to like catch your eye, Joe, and then like says to Vivienne, um, it's, it's good to see you again, though the circumstances are less than ideal. What do you say, Vivian? Uh, she just nods. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> um. He says, "Um, I'm." He he takes him like he literally does the exact same thing that I did. Where he was just like kind of taking it back, like, "Oh, okay, all right, all right." Um, and he says, "Uh, I look forward." to the ball at the end of the week. I've been looking forward to dancing with you. I'm sorry, I keep saying see you later. <laughs> um, oof. Yeah, I mean, I think she would say like, same, I look forward to the ball. 
but she doesn't say anything more than that because in her mind she's just like i look forward to the ball so that i can go back to my garden <laughs> right exactly yeah um okay now do you want to like make a role here vivian like soothing platitudes to just make that the line where it's just like please go away don't talk to me <laughs> sure just like make it clear to him that like you're not in the mood for a conversation right now yeah. but like in a nice way yeah okay yeah that's soothing platitudes now since i'm signing and i'm translating beautifully can i help her um yeah yeah you can help her with it would be let's see i don't hmm because this is a, something that she's doing to him. I don't know if you can help with ancient languages. Because um... I have to express the tone in which she is. So I have to make that calming tone and voice that she's trying to portray. Well, this. I mean, that would be to to him, right? Like, Right. So, oh, right. Because you're, you're speaking. Yeah, but you would have to make the, you would have to have the skill soothing platitudes then. Um, oh, okay. or something similar, right? Um, actually, you could you could help her with etiquette, actually. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. I'll take it. Right? Using your knowledge of etiquette to, to help her. Could just I to still phrase fork it in my it. etiquette, then? Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay, cool. So I have a modifier of two, then? Uh, yes, if yep, if Joe's helping you. Okay. Uh, the an ob, unfortunately, is a five, because it's his oh, will, gosh. right? Let me double check this, um, because it, I think <laughs> that's what Soothing Platitudes is. <clears throat> yeah, that's the base ob. Um, yeah, do you have any other I don't think so. skills you can fork in? I'm trying to find here. There it is. Mm -hmm. uh, astrology. Uh, oh, yeah, persuasion. <laughs> you, can fork, oh. you can fork in persuasion. Okay. So three modifiers, and then you can decide if you want to do astrology or not. Might as well. Okay. So don't add that in as modifier, but have that yeah. as the extra die. <gasps> so ob five. Ooh, so Ooh. close. Roll that astrology <laughs> die. You have three sixes though, so like really okay. good chance. Remind me how to roll the astrology. Uh, so here I'll I'll post it without um without that period. Just do that. Okay. Oh, you can just type an R? Yep. I did not know that, and I've been using it I didn't know that either. <laughs> I feel like that has to have come up at some point. In it's very channels. helpful because my L key is, like, sticky on my keyboard, so I just do yeah. R. Okay, so no added successes there, but you can still spend a fate and reroll all three of those sixes. That's a good chance. You only need one more success. Am I do that? I can't hear you. Asked how many fate I actually have. Uh, <laughs> let's look. What is that? Uh, five. You have five. Go back to stats and skills. Okay. Uh, it's right below reputations and affiliations. Right above skills. Ah, yes. Okay. So you're gonna spend one fate and roll, roll yeah. three sixes. Okay. How do I do that? <laughs> Uh, just do the same thing, except make it 3d6. Okay. There you go. That's all you need. Uh, so go ahead and take off that fate that you spent. Uh, from the five there that you have and put it on uh, Soothing Platitudes. And then you can mark a difficult Soothing Platitudes test, which you don't need, unfortunately. But uh, you marked it anyway. <laughs> uh, all right, cool. You need to go find, like, servants to do Soothing Platitudes, too. So you can do, like, easy <laughs> um, Cool. So you manage to uh, portray that to him in the manner that you you want. Oh, do I get anything since I helped? Yes, you get a difficult test on your etiquette. 
oh, dang it, I didn't want a routine. Uh, yeah, you didn't need a difficult, unfortunately. Yep. Darn it. You need one more routine. No, I need one challenging also. No, so for um, skills below five, you need uh, routine uh, and difficult or challenging. So either of those criteria. Ooh. Once you get to five or above, then it's difficult and challenging, but no routine. Got it. Yep. Uh, okay, cool. So you portray that to him. Uh, Joe you know, says that to him, and then Lord Frederick Kleber says um it is a somber day indeed I, I will leave you to your um grief as i know that uh i will be left with mine have a very pleasant day vivian and i very much look forward to seeing you again and then he bows thank you yeah Same. he bows and and leaves um and then goes over to talk to some other person uh yeah uh marco or joe is there any other conversation you wanted to have during this time? I mean, there's not really anyone for me to talk to. Mm -hmm. I think I, mean, I you wanted just to randomly have... talk to a nobleman if you wanted to. But the only thing I could think of talking to is well, actually, I don't even know Joe is in charge of this, really, do I? I mean, you saw that she was up in front and she was by the tea <clears throat> stuff, so she's obviously been directing people the whole time. She knows that something. She knows something about the whole proceeding. You also have a belief where you want to find out if Joe is responsible. <laughs> you know. Yeah. I probably would. I probably would have a question for her when she's not walking around talking to too many people, mm -hmm. or after, or even after. To be honest, I mean, yeah, you can just like maybe once like people are like starting to like starting to like file out and whatnot. Because mm -hmm. I think Joe would stay behind and like help like clean up and whatnot and help like you know start. Mm -hmm. I mean, you have servants for that, like. Well, I mean, like, just, well, sh okay, you're right. I mean, what's yeah. a no? <laughs> yeah, exactly. You want to make that's sure just, they're not breaking. That's just Alyssa being like, oh, of course, you stay and help tear down things. Yeah. Like, <laughs> No, you're a noble woman. You don't have to do that. No. Um, so, I mean, but she's, you know, saying goodbye to people as they're leaving. So maybe mm -hmm. as less people are there, but she'll be there until the very end. So. Well, I'm, I, I'm gonna talk, I would want to talk with her before people start leaving, though. Okay. I have a very specific question I want to ask her. Yeah, so maybe after like the conversation with Vivian and Kleber, uh, Joe mm -hmm. goes, you know, steps away from that to go do something else, and then you kind of intercept her. Yeah. Okay. So I go to her like, so you're kind of leading up this thing, right? Or at least helping. In a way, but I cannot give any credit to really myself. It is, um, what's her name? Uh, Lady Jocelyn Marquant. Lady Jocelyn Marquant, you see, who is the um, oh. person leading this. Okay, well, I might need to ask her this too then, but um, let's look around. Is, is there anyone here who's not supposed to be? <laughs> well, it's a funeral, not a private party. <sighs> Anybody can come and pay their respects. Yes, I'm just worried about. Uh, how would I say this? I'm just worried about the level of respect that might be shared amongst people, I guess you could say. I'm not sure what you mean by that, Sir Marco. <sighs> sir, Sir Marco. He's definitely not a sir, but yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, whatever. It'd be, it'd be Mr. Pro, Mr. Whatever, Tisby. Mr. Mr. Tisby. Yes, I'm not sure what you mean by well, that, Mr. Tisby. I guess there's no means beating around the bush. Don't exactly have leads. You never know if someone like we're like the kind I'm looking for. They sometimes like to hang around and see how people are acting. If you get my drift which is a colloquial, modern colloquialism that he definitely would have said, but wouldn't have said. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm not sure if Joe's picking up what you're laying down here. <sighs> she just kind of stared at him like confused. I mean, she's just like, are you like implying that there's somebody here who shouldn't be? I'll kind of lean in close, kind of, kind of like, <laughs> like I'll yeah. kind of lean in closer. It's very you never know Sometimes killers like to stay around and watch people squirm. <laughs> yeah, that's not a creepy thing to whisper to someone. <laughs> no, I'm saying like, say. <laughs> I 
don't, and I don't know if one of these people are is that person. I thought I maybe. Wouldn't, hmm? I wouldn't either. You would. You ain't so sorry. You wouldn't. You wouldn't know if it was. No. Mm. Okay, I just trying to make sure I understood the question. Which question you're asking? Yeah, I think he's probably just gonna sigh. Maybe like swear under his breath. I'm like. I'm trying to think. Would Joe know if there's anybody that really hated Nexus Picard? Um, <clears throat> or maybe just maybe just I, in the past has already had a tiff with him. I think you already made that role, and the answer yeah. was no. I, we already had we I, we definitely already had this conversation. Yeah, that okay. was the first session. Mm-hmm. Was it? See, I it's been so long. It has been a long time. Yeah, like you. Yeah. I'm trying to look at your at your skills and see if there's anything you have at your disposal. You could yeah, I mean you could make a roll on gossip wise to see if you have just heard the nobles talking about anything suspicious that you could pass on to Marco. Right, like since then? Yeah. Okay. You've been yeah, mingling. I'm down. Okay. You're you're being learned you're learning gossip wise right now. Um okay. since you're being learned there. But you're you have a really high perception, so you're you're good at this. Yes. Um so let's see. Gossip wise, you're trying to pick up um what type of knowledge? Um How good of gossip do you want to dredge up? Hmm, that's a great question. I mean, maybe let's, just Let's just do and... this. Let's make it make it a graduated test, which just means it's going to be an ob one and then just how many successes you get is just how much Okay. Um, how much information you dredge up. Got it. Yep. Okay. Sounds good. You're not looking for anything particular. You're just seeing what you know. Oh, there you go. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So you know little, the, one little success, the basic success. stuff. Yeah. Right, if you right. wanted to spend a fate or two to increase that, you can know more, but it's up to you. Nah. Okay. So you can mark a bubble on your being learned gossip wise. You just need two more rolls and you get gossip wise opened. Woohoo. So. So, uh, yeah, I think you heard that the only thing, I mean, most people have been pretty respectful, um, during the proceedings, but you maybe heard one conversation happen and it was just before the funeral. It was like with the Forsaken Quill Society when you guys were like directing the setup, um, earlier today, you heard maybe, you know, Sir, um, Leonard Charbonnier, um, say something along the lines of that there's like suspicion about the timing of the deaths of both Maxence and uh, the young Lord Kleber's father, which has now made young Lord Kleber the direct heir to the inheritance of the August estate, right? Like those happen. His father died like a month ago, maybe, um, maybe less. Um, and that, you know, made him, uh, the heir of his father's stuff, but then Maxence dies, and then that makes him also, you know, set up to inherit, because of the weird distant cousin relationship there, um, set up to inherit the August Pressure estate. Right. So basically, yeah. this guy has inherited two estates because of these deaths. Yes, exactly. Okay, got it. <laughs> so I pass that information along. I'm like, listen, the only thing I've heard is this little rumor, and I don't even know. It could just be coincidence. Yeah. Who's to say? It, nobles like to stir up tons of gossip around here but if you're looking for something from me this is all i have to give you well it's appreciated it's more than i've had in most times <laughs> yeah i could tell you about the murder of uh, 1366 i had nothing but a uh, some chewing gum to go off of <laughs> <laughs> Okay. It's a really sticky situation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Thanks. Okay. It really inflated into something bigger than I expected. <laughs> Port popped <laughs> in my face. <laughs> oh gosh. I love you, Seth. I'm sorry. Emily, no, that was but great. No, I'm not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but Emily's just shaking her head. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know what kind of role you can make towards me, though, to see if I had anything to do with it. Right. That's another thing I was going to ask is, Marco, are you still suspicious of her in any way? Uh, not completely. You could just make um, an empathy, empathy roll if you wanted to, to just like... Sure, might as well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So just to see anything. if... 
my, do I need to roll against anything? Uh, no. I mean, okay, so there's two ways we can do this. He can roll an empathy roll, or Joe, you can roll, like, a persuasion roll to... Or, no, I guess it wouldn't be a persuasion no, roll. No, because he has to make the roll, though, yeah, right? It would, in this, yeah, yeah, in this case, because you're not really doing anything actively. I was just if, wondering if, if... If he, like, straight up was, like, accused you and said, like, explain yourself, that would be one thing. <laughs> um, right. But, yeah, he's just kind of picking up signs. So, yeah, I think empathy, uh, the same ob two, um, picking up the mood. Um, unless, I'll, I'll double check the obs on that, but um, that's usually what picking up moods are. Um... Yeah, with that's a six percent chance of success. Yeah, it's very unlikely, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's up, up to. Okay, this is like nearly very impossible unlikely. For me. Yep. Yeah. Wow. Ooh zero successes all right well you can mark another bubble on that you're you're still trying to get better at reading people's faces it's you're out of the game Joe is man. just so hard to read i mean that but you're also out of the game man you're like you haven't done this in forever mm -hmm. okay yep so but you i mean you made a roll towards this you you're at least earning fate on that belief mm -hmm. uh cool well is that the end of the the funeral proceedings you think i think the only thing i wanted to do was um I would like to do something to try to persuade Pastor Gilbert that he is better off without me. <laughs> okay, you just want to go like straight up to him. And is this during so, the funeral proceed? Like, uh, no, no, no. Mingling? This would be like after, like Afterwards. I think I'm like directing the servants okay. of like what to do. Yeah, yeah. Type of, of thing. Pretty much everybody's left. Like I wouldn't do. I'm classy woman. <laughs> um. Uh, okay. I like. So the way I want to go about this is a little is subtlety. Okay. <laughs> I can already know. I already know that Joe's gonna fail at this. I know, but I just want to try it. Yeah. <laughs> um. Basically, I want to say something along the lines of like, while we're directing and whatnot, and it's pretty much wrapped up, mm -hmm. you know, and we're both there. Just be like, Sir Gilbert, what do you? What do you hope to find in a future wife? Okay. Uh, yeah. Poor hmm. guy. Poor guy, indeed. <laughs> so, uh, Sir, Sir Pascal. But she's saying this very kindly. She's just like, what do you yeah. like? Just curious. Sir, Sir Pascal Gilbert, played by uh, John Hader. Um, he. Uh, I'm, I'm going to just take a look at his character real quick just to get a better idea of what who he is. Uh, he says, um, I have always thought, um, that he like definitely blushes when you say that I've always thought that, um, marriage should be a marriage of equals that, um, the two people involved should be a match mentally and emotionally, and they should have similar hobbies, similar interests. They should want to set out on a life's mission together and not have disparate passions and kind of like nod and looks at you yeah uh joe like smiles and says um that's oh my gosh an ice cream sandwich <laughs> <laughs> sir pascal sir pascal says yes i ordered them just for you <laughs> This for you. Oh my gosh. Wow. My husband gets a man bun and then gets me an ice cream sandwich. This is the best day ever. Wow. Oh wow. Okay, sorry. Um Yeah, I think uh Joe, you know, I think she kind of, you know, like nods and like smiles at that and says that's very um admirable thing to look for. Wouldn't you agree that um Oh my gosh, I'm already forgetting her name again. Um, that lady. Oh, right. Uh, lady, uh, lady Jocelyn Marcant. Marcant. Um, she's she's quite, um, I, I want to say something along the lines of, I don't know quite what, what I want to say, but just like I, yeah. something along those li uh, lines of like talking her up. Like, yeah, wouldn't you say that that like she's mm -hmm. somebody, mm -hmm. right? That like, you know, is mentally like, 
up there with us and whatnot. And, you know, just basically saying like, yeah, she kind of fits all that description. Right. Okay. Um, and so are you just trying to like talk her up or do you want, actually want to say to him, like, I think you should court, you know, like ask her to the ball that's coming up or something like that. Do you want to like take that step further? Cause those would be different skills. Right. Right. Um, I think, I mean, my goal is with this, the way that I'm angling it is to kind of more just put that idea in his head, mm -hmm. not necessarily be super straightforward with it. Okay. Hmm. Just what to like kind of subtly put it in there. Yeah. What skill to use for this? Um, my thought is ugly truth. Because ugly I truth. Yeah. Well, because I think that he if has it, to be confronted with like, oh, she doesn't like me if she's suggesting this. Exactly. Because I think if it fails, that's what he's confronted with. It's like, oh, you're saying this because you very specifically are like, not me. But if you <laughs> succeed, it's like, this is like, because, because there's not really another skill for like just laying bare like the situation. That's that's ugly truth. That's what that is. Um, so. But I'm not laying bare the truth, though. I'm trying to just subtly put go for ugly there. truth. You're better at that. You're much better at that. It's perception based. I don't, ha I don't, uh, fine, but I have to learn it though. I'm, yes. Well, what other skill would you be using? I don't know. The, the other skill that I would have, uh, well, yeah, for, for that particular intent, I like, I can't think of another thing that it would be. Um, okay. So that would be perception though. Yeah. It's based on perception. Okay. Um, so let's see. Man, I should have just made this a persuasion roll because I'm working on that too. Um, yeah, I mean that persuasion roll would have been um, like uh, you, okay, should, you should ask yeah, her the ball. You should ask her to the ball, yeah. Um, I haven't given you the ob yet, so you can change your intent. Yeah. You. I think I have a better chance of succeeding though if it's an ugly well, but it's against his will though, and his will nope, super ugly high, truth so is no ugly truth is against the uh, complexity of the truth. Oh. Yep. Okay, great. Then I'm gonna go for that. <laughs> Okay, so let's let's figure this out. I'm not sure what the ob would be here. Is this? I'm gonna start from the top and go down. Is this ugly truth about a nuanced or de delicate situation? Well, what are the other options? Uh, is this? Uh, and these are can be equivalents, right? Ugly truth about a complex political situation. Ugly no. truth about your friends. Ugly truth about your family. And stating the obvious worst possible outcome. It's not definitely not one. It's, it's not, not the worst possible yeah. outcome. I mean, because he's a friend. I'd, so... I'd say maybe friends. Yeah. Friends. Yeah. So that's based off three. Okay. So, that's, so that's I have to make all successes. Yeah. <laughs> Crap. It's, you still have a better chance of succeeding on this than you would have had with the then persuasion. It was persuasion. I know. All right. No modifiers. Base ob three. Uh, yes. Ugh. Nope. Yeah, that, that would be a roll. <laughs> um, okay, so you can mark a bubble towards the, the ugly truth uh, being learned. And uh, yeah, so what happens, right, is he, he looks at you and he says, <laughs> Josephine Joe. Oh. <laughs> If you would rather, I. And he can't quite find the words to say it. Oh, you're going to make me feel so bad. <laughs> and he kind of coughs and he says, <clears throat> I will see you at the next meeting. He just nods and. It just, just dismisses himself from the conversation. Oh, poor dude. And you're not entirely sure, like, what he was going to say, but he just obviously was, like, oh. frazzled by what you just said. Poor guy. You're just tearing up this dude. I mean, <laughs> I'm trying to put make him indifferent to me, so I don't, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, cool. So uh, the... The uh, conversation ends there. The the wrap up finishes, and then um, you're gonna go meet with uh, Bertrand Crozier to go through the will, um, whatever he's given you 
for the will. Yes. Um, so we find you in Crozier's study in the Harmony Opera House. And uh, we see, um, basically what, what happens is uh, Crozier looks up from his, like, you know, accounting or whatever he's doing for the for Harmony Opera House. And he says, um, <clears throat> I um, know that you knew uh, Maxence well. And uh, I know that you're also distressed by the circumstances of, well, all of this. But I think that, well, maybe the things that he left behind for you could be some comfort. It's not much. And then he, like, stands up and goes over to, like, a, uh, a bookshelf. And he, like, takes off, like, four books. These, like, dusty books. And he, like, sets them in front of you on the desk. And he says... These are for you. He, he signed them in his will to you. Uh, it's, it's probably like four books and then like a, two scrolls, like older scrolls. Ooh. And uh, he um, kind of nods to himself and he says, I know that Maxence wanted you to have these. And so I, I know that you had a shared interest in that uh, club of yours, whatever it was. He didn't really talk about it much, but... Um, well, these are yours. Sorry, I'm I'm rambling. I, it's been a trying week. I'm sure it is very hard to lose somebody so close to you. It is, especially when it, there's nothing you can do about it. If that's how you feel, imagine how I felt sitting next to him. Yeah, and he kind of nods and. Thank you. For these, I will be sure to use them well. He nods again, and and then I guess you get you just leave basically, unless you have something. Else I leave and then start geeking out over my new books. <laughs> yeah. So you want to you want to take a look at the books? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I mean, let's have you make a read test, right? Just to okay. like, what, what's your intent exactly? I guess is the is the question. Um, I guess I want to see. Um. I just want to figure out, like, obviously they're about the ancient the world, but yeah. mm -hmm. I want to see what they're specifically about, though. Like, what, like, yeah. specific categorize all of them? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Uh, let's see. Read, read, read. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's gonna be an ob four test. Okay. Um. So, but you can obviously add in, you can fork in astrology if you want to, but also ancient languages, mm -hmm. history, um, myth-wise, and symbology probably. Okay, so that's four things I'm adding in. Ancient language, foreign, uh, history, myth-wise. And symbology. And yeah. symbology. So four things. Okay. Are you adding astrology yeah. too? No. Okay. Just just those four things. All right. Yep. All four. Okay. Got it. Okay. You can mark a routine for your read. Yay. And uh, yeah, you, you go ahead and devour these books. Um, and... <laughs> it's, it's probably so where are you reading these exactly just like in what you're studying? i mean i probably i probably go back to my At study yeah yeah mm -hmm. okay maybe and, even uh, like you know as like in i'm probably i probably hang out with vivian most of the time like mm -hmm. you know in the you know in the study uh, you know we do lessons and then we take breaks and whatnot so like yeah in between lessons so so i think whatnot. what probably what what happens is you come back from this right um and um you you go to like the study where you would um normally hang out or whatever um and uh vivian you have just received a letter where would you be yes um i mean probably just would you be there when vivian shows up or would you be like in your room privately like what i mean when joe shows up yeah uh, I'm just curious if you guys are in the same room when this is happening. Yeah, I guess she would be in the study. Okay. Yeah. 
So you've just like gotten this letter and are starting to, to read it um, when uh, when Joe shows up. And so, Joe, yeah, you, you sit down and start devouring these and categorizing them, making reference notes and all this stuff, oh, yeah. comparing it to your own library. Um, so basically, the books are obviously about the Sakurai, the, the Saint Empire. But um, they are, so there's, the, the two scrolls are um, diagrams of um, like signs. Um, and they're, they're signs that you've never seen before. Like they're very, very obscure signs. Um, and it, you, you, you're, you must think that Maxence must have like maybe gotten these recently and was going to show you, but then like, um, didn't maybe, or it doesn't really make sense because like he had these in your, in his will for you, but he hadn't talked to you. Like these are, you've never seen these before. So there, maybe there's a number of conclusions might've gone across your mind like as to why he didn't show you these or reference them before um but yeah it's like really obscure weird stuff like we're like words and terminology that you like maybe even you don't even understand like it's obviously the same language that you're used to of um or that the, the translation is like using the letters of the language you you speak but it's like a bunch of letters that it sounds like it's, it would be a word in this language, but, like, you have no idea what the word actually means. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's a lot, of, a lot of weird terminology. Some of it has to do with... Um, there's one that has to do with... Um, it's, like, a weird, obscure sign for, like, drawing out of. Like, that's the best translation you can come come up with but it's like not the same one that you would normally use it's like some weird other thing you also find one that is like the opposite it's like it's 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 counterpart um and it's like to put in but it's like again a very specific weird obscure way to to say these things and you're just like why would you just use the sign that we would normally use for this like it's just kind of strange but yeah a lot of that sort of stuff that's what the scrolls contain um and then the books are mainly they mainly have to do with um uh well one of the one of the books is a biography of uh neo divinis who is the um uh the emperor right the ancient emperor who like reunited the these disparate tribes into this like religious empire um there's a biography of his that you've never come across before again a very obscure biography um written by some monk like and like you're reading through this thing and it's like you're you're sure this guy must have been insane or something because half of it is like gibberish um it's obviously a biography or an attempt at a biography of neo divinis but like some of the accounts are just not right like you've read biographies of this guy before and like right. it's just like and then he went and he met a dragon and he uh was taught the the ways of fire breathing from this dragon and it, but the way it's written is literally like this guy must have been a child or a madman. Like, the vernacular he uses is so strange and almost childish. It's just so weird, this whole thing. It's kind of like a, a, a um, an example would be, like, it's like the Apocrypha to the Bible. So, like, you have these stories about Jesus, and then it's like, and then Jesus as a child tamed dinosaurs this one time, <laughs> right? Like... That's my favorite uh, Bible story. Spoiler alert, there's actually an apocryphal text that talks about oh, baby gosh. Jesus taming dragons. Does happen. Oh my gosh. Um, <laughs> um, but it's like that sort of thing, where you're just like, okay, I don't think this is real, but like, just weird biograph, semi-pseudo-biographical stuff. And then some of the other books are, um, uh, there's like a philosophy text about the um, the meaning of, of the sign language like not not just like its translation but like the deeper psychological and emotional ramifications of each sign and like almost to an astrological um extent like this sign you know means this but also it has this very deep meaning it means life and it means like the giving of life in this very particular context and if you sign it under a full moon then you will be given many children like that sort of weird kind of stuff and all the books are like that right like all of these things are just like weird super obscure variations on the stuff you've already known um and yeah you're just wondering like 
why <laughs> like why when, would he give me these when and did when he, did get he get these acquire exactly these? yeah like it's so weird interesting yeah, okay so you're, you're categorizing them vivianne you get a letter from a uh a certain young gentleman uh known as sir matthias van Dam. Um, and, uh, Sir Matthias Van Dam is a, um, he's a nobleman. Uh, he lives several, in, on the other side of the country, um, uh, you, you, you tell me, uh, Vivian, how do you know this guy? Like, when did you meet him, or have That's you ever met question. him? Like, how do you, why do you, why are you pen pals with this dude? Um, I mean, I think she's definitely met him, probably, like, <laughs> He probably traveled to their estate for some big event at one point and she met him and and they just kind of had like a conversation and then um and then I don't know they both showed interest in like writing and um I don't know probably share an interest in like botanical things of of that nature and so she was like i like i want i want to talk more about plants and so they were like oh well obviously we're not going to be able to see each other and actually talk about it but mm -hmm. we could write letters and share our information about plants yeah yeah um so i don't think he knows he doesn't know anything like actually about plants in a um uh, scientific or okay. practical sense he loves painting them um oh, nice. he's obsessed so he's a painter um <laughs> he is um like an up-and-coming artist like he is kind of well known he's an he's apprentice to a master painter like leonardo da vinci sort of like michelangelo like <laughs> that sort of like level of like um master artist person um and he's apprenticed to this dude and they they're right now they're in some coastal city several hundred miles away from this city um or however i don't know the exact distances but a while away and um so maybe he's, he's from here then he might be originally from here yeah away from mm -hmm. that. so yeah he's apprenticed to this guy and he's there right now um because the the painter the master painter is like a uh um has a patron there some sort of noble patron who's paying for his mm -hmm. art um and so this letter basically is um tells him tells you about the work he's been doing under this master um just giving you information about like the cool thing that his master's doing and then the part that he got to play so like there's this church that they've been painting um and and like drawing this really intimate fres uh, uh not intimate um what's the word i'm looking intricate. for intricate yeah intricate frescoes on the like ceiling and walls of this church um, and so he, he gives you a lot of like fun. He's really excited about this. And so he like tells you all about like the cool stuff he's been doing there. Um, and he also towards the, the middle sort of end of the letter, um, he, he starts like waxing poetic. He literally like wrote you a poem <laughs> in here. Um, and, uh, it's, it's not super good, but you can tell, like he said, uh, like I've been studying poetry in this library like i've been reading these books on poetry or whatever um and here's my attempt at a poet poem for you sort of a thing and it's 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 not very good but i don't know if vivianne would be able to tell it's not very good um and so Is like there a role i can make for that <laughs> i mean it would be like a poetry wise role yeah you can make a role okay i'll make a role for him to see how well he actually did at the poetry i assume he, he doesn't have a very high poetry skill but um so do I need to add a being learned for that? Yep. Uh, he got zero successes. It's just awful. It's absolutely, unless you, you, you just get one success and you've succeeded. So being learned, poetry wise, is based on perception. And just put in knob one. Can I fork in... I mean, I guess I don't really want to. Do you can't fork in anything because it's it's uh, being learned. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. right, okay. Actually, put the put the ob at zero point five, so it will double to one, because you only need one success. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, it's not very good. You can mark a root, uh, one of the bubbles for poetry wise there. 
It's not very good. It's very obvious. It's not very good, but it's very heartfelt. Um, he, it's it's basically the poem consists of like, um, you know, I was sitting by the ocean and I wish you were here and like, the the ocean reminds me of the color of your eyes, that sort of thing, right? <laughs> but it's not very good. It's heartfelt, but not very good. Um, but yeah, and then he talks about how he misses you, and and then towards the end of the letter, he gets a little bit more serious, and then basically says like something along the lines of. Um, so actually, real, real quick, you tell me. Um, I'm trying to remember if this relationship was already romantic or no. I think so, but I don't think... Let's double check it. I think this... <clears throat> yes, but I don't it, think I want marked. it to be in the sense of, like, already realized, like, okay. if yeah. that makes sense. Yeah, like, you both have crushes on each other, basically. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, so I think the end of the letter is more or less, he, he talks about how he's going to be a great painter one day and create amazing works of art and how, and then at the very end of the, the letter, um, there's another page and it's a drawing of a, a flower. Um, and it's, I mean, that's probably really well done. I'll, I'll roll for him again to, to see. Um, but he's good at that. So, um, let's see. Uh, what are the obs for painting? I think he would try. It's not a super complicated painting but he's trying to impress you so yeah he got a four successes on an op two um so it's it's fair, it's well done it's not it's not terribly complicated but it's well done um and i just realized one of the reasons why his poem was probably so horrible is because my eyes are brown <laughs> 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 yep there you go so either, like, the, either the ocean is the really ocean gross <laughs> yeah <laughs> yep or he just doesn't remember the color of your eyes <laughs> But um, at the end of his uh, letter, he, he you know references the, the painting and says, you know, I, I want to draw your garden for the rest of my life. And that's like the, the, the last thing that he says that's like implying like, eh, eh. <laughs> So yeah, how does Vivian respond to that? I mean, she's like, oh, dang it, I really like this guy. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, she's probably, like, shedding a few tears because it's like, oh, this letter is so, like, nice and heartfelt. And, um, and then she, like, realizes and she's like, oh, gosh, I really have to get out of my marriage with this other guy or... <laughs> yeah uh, okay um, so so there's yeah. another thing though also to consider right um this guy is if he spends the rest of his life being a painter like he could be a very respected painter but he's not in any line to inherit any estate or title or anything like that he is a noble by birth but like basically the only thing he can offer you is a comfortable life because he'd maybe be a good painter and be paid well. But, like, in terms of, like, actual prospects, this guy is, like, eh. And, and obviously that wouldn't matter. Maybe he's not so much to Vivienne, but, mm -hmm. you know. But convincing. she knows that it ultimately matters in, yeah. Yeah. And to your parents, so. Yeah. But, I mean, you could run away, but that's a whole other thing. <laughs> I can't hear you, Alyssa. Can I make a perception test to see if I can see I was just going to say, yeah. <laughs> That's probably a good idea. Are you trying to hide it, Vivian? Uh, no. She, I mean, she yeah. probably didn't even realize that Joe was yeah. in the room. I, Joe, I think you just noticed then. Yeah. Okay. I mean, she's like, my books, dang it. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> no, no, no. Joe's not like that. So Joe, Joe is actually very compassionate towards Vivian. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I think she just goes over and she just signs like, what's wrong? Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> um... Do do I know about this boy? Uh, you probably know that we have like a friendship through letters. Yeah. You know she has a person she writes to at least. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. I mean, she she probably just signs like, "I thought this situation couldn't get more complicated." <laughs> and then she like hands you the letter to let you read it yeah yeah joe you almost laugh when you get to the poem like (laughs) it's so awful um yeah um she's just like i think she just signed something along the lines of ah this is the love you want she just like nods she just kind of sighs It's up to you. <laughs> <laughs> Joe would say something like that. <laughs> uh, but she's not like in like a judgmental way. She's just right. like, mm-hmm. it's up to you. Yeah. You know, like. Unfortunately, that just like leaves it square on Vivienne to figure out it all. Mm-hmm. So. I mean, and I think she's she like, just signs like, to do. she's God, like, exactly. I think she's just like, I'll help you with whatever you want. I don't even know what she would think to do, so. I mean, write a swiftly written reply. Oh, I mean, obviously, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, gosh, what what would she say? Exactly. Oh, no. (laughs) Oh. I mean, he basically just proposed to you, so... (laughs) We could take a break here and then give you a chance to think about it a little bit. Yeah. Sounds good. Okie dokie. We'll take a quick break and we'll come back for our last part of Lavender Shadows. We still got a letter to write and uh, Marguerite has to figure out if she is to be one of the fancy performers at the, at the ball. We'll be right back with more Lavender Shadows right after this. Stick around. 